On to Prop 23, of course, it suspends implementation of air pollution control law AB 32. Of course, it requires major sources of emission to report and reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, and that cause global warming until unemployment drops to five, what, 5.5 percent or less in a full year. There has been a lot of talk about who is sponsoring uh, this bill. Let's listen to this. Mm -hmm. When you think about Prop 23, think about two Texas oil companies funding it. Think about higher energy costs and more dependence on oil. So is this uh, just a big oil Texas oil men trying to, to save their pocketbooks? Well, I think this is a very effective ad because it is, it is in fact true that these two oil companies paid to gather the signatures to put this measure on the ballot. Now, this measure does, however, have a lot of support in the business community throughout California. As you were talking about in the earlier segment, California's unemployment rate is above 12 percent. There are two million Californians out of work. Mm -hmm. And those who support this say that this measure puts more costs on businesses and, and reduces employment. So if we suspend the rules until the unemployment rate comes back down to 5.5 percent for one full year, mm -hmm. then we will allow the state to recover, the state's economy to recover before we impose these additional costs on Bottom businesses. Bottom line, though, is if it, if it passes, it prevents an energy tax hike. And in some ways, I guess, it still has to preserve California's clean air laws, right? Well, yes, There's still the, a certain the, amount of the law in there that says, I mean, we're just not going to throw the, the baby out with the bathwater on yes. this one. No, it, it does not suspend all air pollution rules by any means, but it does suspend the requirements of one particular bill known as AB 32 passed in 2006 yeah. by, the, by the legislature that said California must reduce its air, global warming emissions mm -hmm. to the level that uh, it was in 1990. That has to be achieved by 2020. That's what that law said, and this would suspend those requirements. Okay. In these tough times. Yeah. Uh, that brings us to uh, Proposition 26. It requires that certain state and local fees be approved by a supermajority or two-thirds vote. Fees include those that address adverse impacts on society or the environment caused by the fee payers' business. Yes. This, this is an effort to, uh -huh. to extend to fees the requirements that already exist for raising a lot of local taxes or taxes at the state level. Uh, let me try to give you a good example of how this would work. In Chula Vista recently, the city council uh, considered passing a fee requiring motorists in, who were uh, to blame for a, a, a car accident to pay the cost of the emergency services that responded. If a fire truck or an ambulance responded, the motorist would have to pay those costs. It would be a new fee imposed by the city council. Now, under this measure, if it is approved, the city council would not be able to do this without a two-thirds vote of the citizens of Chula Vista. And the bottom line here is, is, I mean, a lot of people see these fees as taxes, right? I mean, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a roundabout way to slide a tax through. Well, it's, it's a game of semantics, whether it's a fee or a tax. It's yeah. something that you have to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have nine uh, state ballots, uh, state uh, propositions that are on the ballot. Uh, what is your take on what California voters were, are going to do? I know you can't look into your crystal ball, but how are, uh, as an electorate, we feeling right well, now? Well, if you look at the polls, most of these are, are going to have real trouble getting passed. The voters are not in a mood to, uh, for, for a lot of these things, but again, Again, as, as you said earlier, Sandra, when the voters are unsure, when something is complicated, they just tend to vote no. And it's, it's uh, significant to note that all nine of these were put on the ballot through the initiative process. That is, none of them went on the ballot uh, by the legislature. These were all uh, initiatives, private special interests, mm -hmm. raise the money to, to gather the signatures and put these on the ballot. And that makes mm -hmm. them suspect in the minds of a lot of voters. It sure does. Yeah, I tell you. It's going to be interesting to see where these propositions go. I mean, you care to give us any predictions on, on what you think on what we're doing with uh, Prop 19 especially? Well, how's, it, how's it going to it, shake it out? It appears that public sentiment is moving against Prop 19. This is a measure that on its surface looks appealing. Okay, let's, let's just legalize it. The war on drugs certainly has been a failure. So, but at, on closer inspection, I think people, people are probably going to reject this one. Okay. It'll be interesting. We'll yeah. all know in just yeah. a couple of weeks. All right, um, thanks, Bob. Thank you very thank much. You. And that uh, covers our look at the statewide propositions that voters will be deciding on in only 12 days. But a week from tonight, we hope you'll join us as we take a look at the most controversial local propositions on the ballot. Join us for Decision 2010, Proposition D and Proposition J. Prop D, of course, is the proposed half-cent sales tax hike for the city of San Diego. Prop J is the annual parcel tax increase on homes and other types of land. That money would go to the San Diego Unified School Districts. And we hope you'll join us next Thursday night at 9 for that. And we thank you for joining us tonight.
We hope we've helped you make some decisions in the upcoming general election. The KUSI News at 10 is coming up next.